All right. Hello, everybody. This is Sarah Ziegler Hi. from the America's Mart team. Thank you guys all for joining our Directions in Design webinar. Uh, we'll get started in just a few minutes. We'll just let people file in. Um, as you're waiting, make sure you do click the all panelists and attendees um, at the chat function to the right of your screen. There is a chat at the bottom. You'll click chat and then click all panelists and attendees so you can write in where you're from. It's always fun to see where our attendees are located, whether you're in Atlanta or you're listening from afar. Um, so be sure to do that so we can all see where you're from and we'll just give it one minute for everyone to file in. All right, we've got a good amount of people on. So welcome everybody. Uh, today you're tuning in to hear more of the behind the scenes of our Directions in Design program as we kick off season two this year. We're really excited to introduce our designers and unveil their beautiful projects that they've been working really hard on over the last month. So before we get into our discussion, I want to cover just a couple housekeeping items with webinars. I know we've been through so many of these in the past few months, so I'm sure you guys are all pros, but um, just a few notes. So as mentioned before, where everyone's typing in, you know, where they're from. It's such a fun way to see where everyone who's listening in from near and far are from. So please do turn on all panelists and attendees. Click that in the chat function so we can see everyone. Uh, we've got, you know, Chicago, Seattle, Washington, Atlanta, Raleigh, I mean, Swanee, Georgia, we got it all, guys. It's exciting. Um, also, we do have a Q&A function, so if you have a question during the presentation, you can ask it in the chat or you can ask it in the Q&A function that's at the bottom of the screen. Um, this webinar will also be recorded and available, and it'll be emailed to all the registrants after it airs. It will also be available on americasmart.com slash Atlanta remote this week. And I also wanted to thank our friends at ADAC for being a part of this annual fall program together. I know we're so excited to get into more detail on the sourcing of both of these campuses and the products that the designers chose. But thanks again, ADAC, for you know, co-locating co and collaborating with us. So I guess, as I mentioned, everyone, ADAC and America's Mark do co-locate our Fall Design Week and discover ADAC on the same week in September. And you know, this year definitely looks a little different as COVID-19 has shifted our day to day. Uh, we got our creative juices flowing and decided to pivot to a virtual directions and design program. Uh, these designers were given a space in a home that incorporates both product from America's Mart and ADAC and follows our theme, which is a focus on health and wellness. Our moderator today is Atlanta designer Steve McKenzie. Steve is a Directions and Design alumni, and he kicked off the season one last year with an on-site event at both ADAC and America's Mart's campuses and using product from each of them. And his theme was centered around Sherwin-Williams Color of the Year Naval. So let me share our screen. And get started. Thanks, let's Sarah. Take a, mm -hmm, yeah, let's take a look back at Steve's vignette from last year. Um, here is his space at America's Mart. Lovely. It was such a beautiful space. Thank and here's his space at ADAC, which was a bedroom. And, you know, without further ado, I will let Steve take it away, just giving a little more, you know, scoop on his experience with the program, discussing that health and wellness theme and America's Martin ADAC's impact for these awesome designers. So take it away, Steve. Thanks so much, Sarah. <clears throat> it was a real honor last year to be asked to do the first directions in design vignettes, one at ADAC and one at America's Mart. 
we take for granted as Atlanta designers how fortunate we are to have both resources right here and so easily accessible. You literally can find almost anything as a designer between the two sources. And I wanted to share that through those vignettes last year. Um, as Sarah said, I worked with Naval as a starting off point at the um, America's Mart vignette. And definitely we're starting to see more and more trends of more wallpaper emerging. And I loved the option of the overscaled art from Wendover at America's Mart to be able to turn that into wallpaper and have that big abstract painting as a, um, a wallpaper. I, I also feel strongly, and I think it's even stronger this year than it was last, that brown furniture is having a moment again and coming back. And I wanted to reflect that in both vignettes, the night scans at America's Mart and this beautiful piece from modern history at America's Mart. Um, the night scans were from Century at ADAC in the other vignettes. I like the yin and yang of the pull of um, modern with traditional. I think it gives an energy to the room and I tried to reflect that in both of these. I think we have some very modern items in here. Um, the abstract art by Stephen Sean, but then you've got the tradition of the Moatar rug on the floor there that you see and the made goods bed is kind of very modern and sleek, but a nod to a four poster. Um, very classic drawings um, from Wendover in the back down at ADAC. Um, but it all just worked together and it's really fun. I enjoy doing these vignettes because there's no client. <laughs> and you can really express yourself. It's like doing a trade show. And I, I hope I captured kind of of the moment, the emergence of blues really being strong and serenity really coming into play. This year's theme, and I'll introduce our four designers here in just a second, this year's theme of health and wellness um, really I think could not be more timely. As designers, I know we've all had conversations with clients this year um, based on the pandemic and how they use their spaces and how they need a respite here or they need a more conducive workspace there. And I'm really excited to share and find out from these four designers what they did when they put together their spaces virtually. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the four panelists if I could first. And forgive me for reading, but I want to not miss anything from their bios. First, we have Caitlin Roundtree. And having grown up playing on our family's construction sites in South Georgia, Caitlin's love of architecture became apparent at an early age. She attended Valdosta State University to study interior design and then moved to Atlanta, Atlanta to attend graduate school at the Savannah College of Art and Design. As an interior designer at Terracotta, Caitlin handles the selection of finishes, in furniture that highlight the beauty of the architecture as well as the personality of the homeowner. She creates concepts, develops drawings, prepares budgets, oversees purchasing and installations, and carries many of Terracotta's interior projects from start to finish. When Caitlin not working in the design studio, you can find her adventuring around Atlanta with her son or enjoying delicious pastries in neighborhood coffee shops. Oh, to be able to do that again. <laughs> Caitlin, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Second, we have Tish Mills Kirk. Um, many of you probably are very familiar with Tish. For the last 20 years, Tish Mills Kirk has dedicated her business to creating highly peaceful spaces that are a true reflection of the homeowner's personality and way of living. She has mastered the skill of creating balanced spaces that are seamless from interior to exterior by using a mix of colors and materials that reflect the surroundings. Based in Atlanta, Tish Mills Interior Design has worked on projects throughout the Southeast and the West Coast, as well as China and Africa, creating an international presence for her phone at the moment. Tish draws inspiration from her life growing up in California and utilizes West Coast aesthetics to create a harmonious feel in her projects. This has led to features in magazines such as Modern Luxury, El Decor, Traditional Homes, Wall Street Journal, Interiors, Atlanta Home and Lifestyle, and Atlanta Magazine. Tish Mills design projects have been abundantly recognized and earned her 24 ASID Excellent Design Excellence Awards as well as three national ASID awards in conjunction with Southern Excellence Magazine. Tish has also had the honor of participating in 19 regional show houses and two traditional home Napa Valley show houses. Welcome Tish. 
you and happy to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you. Next, we have Chris Soshi. Chris is a full service Atlanta based interior design firm working with both residential and commercial clients to assist with a wide range of challenges, including selection of architectural details and finishes collaborating with architects and builders, decorating a functional, beautiful space and creating custom pieces tailored for your living spaces. From styling bookcases to construction from the ground up, Chris Soshi Inc. puts the same passion for design into each of his projects. Founded by Chris Soshi, C. Soshi Inc. is a member of ASID and has been recognized with numerous Design Excellence Awards from the American Society of Interior Designers and Modern Luxury Faces of Design. Great design cannot, can improve not only form, but also function. After all, design is a creativity with a strategy. Welcome, Chris, and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Happy to be here. Justin Williams is our fourth um, designer. And is Justin on? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Okay, I, di I didn't see you, sorry. <laughs> you weren't on my screen, I panicked for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Williams is an Atlanta-based interior designer whose love for decor and design developed into a business where his main goal is to bring quality as well as affordable design to any consumer. Since its birth in 2009, Trademark Design Company has gained clientele ranging from one bedroom apartments to million dollar estates. Trademark has created new branches of business all encompassing the home and lifestyle division that help elevate homes across the globe. Along with being featured in magazines such as Jezebel, Atlanta Magazine, Atlanta Magazine's Home, Empower, and others, he's also debuted in Picture Perfect Parties, an internationally published cookbook filled with stylish solutions for entertaining by Rizzoli International. All these, although these acknowledgements are held in great regard, Justin is a Southern gentleman whose design expertise attracts people from all over the world. Justin has always had a keen eye for design. His parents identified this attribute in his early teens and prepared him for the field by providing software programs to further develop his curiosity for architecture and interiors. Justin would not only practice designing homes from start to finish, but he would make Changes to the family's actual 3D via home, home via 3D renderings. Later in his teen years, Justin developed renovation plans for his family home and worked alongside the contractor, who then became a mentor and taught him the inner and outer workings of the home structure. As a highly sought after interior designer, Justin has a vast amount of exposure to all elements of design, which includes commercial design, set design, photo styling, and real estate staging. This exposure has led Justin's work to grace the magazine pages of many publications and blogs worldwide. Justin hopes to make fashionable yet functional spaces for his clients. His life's work has been helping others live better and he will continue to do so by elevating the spaces one at a time. Thanks Justin and welcome. It's a pleasure. Great to have you all here. Well, I'd love to just dive into the designs if we could do that. And I think we're gonna start with you, Caitlin. Tell us a little bit about what was your starting off point for this kitchen? Sure, so um, given the umbrella of wellness as um, kind of the starting point for our, all of our designs, um, I kind of asked myself, like, what does wellness look like to me? Uh, I believe that wellness looks different for everyone. Um, and so not having a client, I decided to make myself my own client. Um, <laughs> So this room is very feminine. It's uh, quaint but powerful. There's plenty of storage. Um, so you can instantly declutter your visual field. Uh, there is use of natural materials or suggestions of natural materials. Um, and that is kind of what wellness meant for me. Great. Well, it's a beautiful space. I'd like to jump over to the rendering if we could. And just talk a little bit about where you drew your inspiration from. Sure. So again, kind of um, starting with that soft feminine touch, um, I decided to, you know, pop a little bit of the soft pinks that are very on trend right now um, on a background of a warm light wood. Um, again, playing into the idea of wellness and bringing in natural materials where possible uh, and also just bringing a softness to the kitchen um, to kind of help ease the mind. We're all very, you know, 
into our computers right now more so than ever. Um, so I decided to create a space where you could kind of come and escape. Escaping technology is important right now, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I noticed that you used um, brass and gold accents in, in your design. And I'm curious from all the panelists, are you still seeing that as a, a, a significant trend? We are. So one of the biggest trends that we're all seeing right now is the use of warmer tones. And I think this is kind of a sign of the times where um, we're looking for that more... Um, that warm enveloping feel uh, mm -hmm. rather than the colder trend that we had not too long ago uh, where it was all the cool grays. Um, so it's interesting to see all of these warmer tones come back because they were here before. Um, so now it's all about the warm woods. Um, as you mentioned before, Steve, that you know brown is kind of having a moment again, uh, which is really lovely to see. And that also plays into these brass tones as well, just bringing brightness um, and warmth to the space. Anyone else, do you, are you seeing the brass and gold as well? Definitely. Um, I feel like it's more of a classic look and uh, a lot of people are using it for that purpose. It's got a comforting part to it as well. Yeah, great. And I think, um, Caitlin did a great job here of the way she mixed it with other metals. Yeah, um, agree. A little bit of brass and gold goes a long way. It makes it special. Um, it doesn't take it back to, you know, the times of the 70s where people would freak out when everything was in those ranges. But, um, but she's done a really beautiful job of mixing the metals and making it a really special exclamation point. I agree. Now, Caitlin, you sourced both from America's Martin ADAC. What were some of the standout items that you sourced from the both locations? I did. Yes. So, you know, first and foremost, the kind of showstopper in this kitchen is that hood. And that's from Francois and Co., who we all know and love. Their products are just stellar out of this world. Um, so you can find them at ADAC. Um, the appliances, one of the biggest things that I look for when designing um, a kitchen is to be able to have a panel ready refrigerator and Sub-Zero Wolf really knocks that out of the park. Um, they are really, you know, the gold standard whenever it comes to appliances. So you'll see the paneled refrigerator there to your right um, from Sub-Zero found at Design Galleria in ADAC as well. And then there are little touches like the accent lighting above the shelves that are from arteriors in a black finished metal. So you get a little bit of shine without competing with that lovely brass hood. Um, and then bringing in little accessories because that's really what makes our homes look lived in, right? Is all the little accessories. Um, so you'll see my solidarity fist there in the back from Noir, which is very relevant in these times right now um, as we all stand together for our nation. Um, and then of course the beautiful um, wallpaper in the back, which is from Philip Jeffries. It's a terrazzo look wallpaper um, that I honestly just fell in love with as soon as I found it. Um, and so you can find them at ADEC as well. I have to say when I saw your rendering, that was what I flipped out the most for with that terrazzo. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. <laughs> and talk to me one more question. Just talk to me a little bit about the choice of blush. I, I love it on the island, but it's something you don't normally see. That is true, yes. Um, so we've all seen this, you know, blush trend that's been happening for a while now. Um, when it first started, it was millennial pink, and now it's kind of grown a little bit more to this um, more of a taupey pink. It's gotten a little more sophisticated, a little less bubble gum. Um, so I am honestly a slightly pink obsessed person. Uh, and so I saw it as an opportunity to um, kind of showcase this color that is also having a moment right now in a way that it would take a lot of convincing to get our clients to do. So um, although I will say Terracotta does have um, one pink island under our belts at this moment. So uh, it's, it's definitely not something that no one would do. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful and I'd love to see the room in real life. Thank you. Let's move on to Tish. 
just talk a little bit about the inspiration behind the space. You had the living room. I did. And um, the, my jumping off point, since we didn't have a assigned client, is um, I took four recent projects and laid out images of their living room, just the blank spaces to see what I really connected to in the time right now. And so the space I used is actually, it's not designed like this in real life. I, I did a completely different design that would seem like cheating to just throw everything in ideas. <laughs> but, um, but the reason why I selected it is there's so much connection to the inside and outside that, um, that you'll see when we get to the rendering, there's steel windows and great beam work. And it was a ground up project that, um, that this living room continues to an outdoor space through this steel, there's stone, like there's so many fantastic elements that I was able to find all of my inspiration from it. Um, for example, the Dimitri, so, uh, the Dimitri um, ottoman that almost looks like the elongated and squished S has this beautiful movement in it and it has the softness that we're seeing in so much design right now, but it's still very geometric and it has a nice geometric line against the beams. Um, the pendant that hangs in the middle of the room is Harberton Forge, which is um, from the Mart. I love the double teardrop to it mixed with the shade. You know, again, it gives us some softness, but it's still a very strong element. Um, the furnishings that I used I was thinking about um, right now and how much time we're all spending at home and how our spaces have become really even more important and how we're using them um, multifunction and you know they need to be incredibly comfortable. I've always said to clients, when you come home, the world is, there's a lot going on in the world. When you shut your door, it should really be this barrier of Zen to where you could cocoon into your own space and you can, create that quietness that you can then spend with your family, you can have solitude, whatever the thing is you need. And so um, I applied all of that into this space. It's great. It's really a beautiful space. I, I'm curious, have all of you experienced clients asking about making spaces multifunctional now? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, they definitely need to function more ways than they used to, I think. And it doesn't matter how um, small or large a home is. I mean, you know, we're known for working on really large scale projects. And it, it doesn't matter how big mm -hmm. the house is, it's still happening. Um, you know, there are kids home now and where are they going to be doing their schoolwork and, you know, um, parents working from home and, then there's additional, a lot of people have had tutors or nannies come in to help. It's, it's really interesting to see the transition. One of the biggest things we've seen in that is the need for um, really good lighting. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, everybody, yes, I'm, we're all taking yes. Mm -hmm. Because we all love natural life and we love light and we all love ambient light. But when your home has to transition, when all of a sudden your kids are doing homework in the living room, which or you're taking conference calls in the living room, you need good you need good task lighting as well. So the three levels of lighting have become really mm -hmm. important. Great observation. Can we take a look at the rendering? Walk us through the space just a little bit, Tish, and talk a little bit about the materials and how they relate to health and wellness. Sure. So. Um, Again, I went for that escape from the world idea, since it is a living room, right? And it needs to be a place where two people can sit and, you know, whatever, have a glass of wine and a conversation at the end of the day. You know, when they transitioned from the den to the living room, you know, the commute, since we're all at home. Um, <laughs> or it can be where the whole family can gather. Um, I purposely, in this living room, did not put a television, although, let's be honest, there's probably one somewhere in this room. But, um, but I went for the very soft, um, the stone wall is so beautiful that, um, that the fireplace sits on and then all the beam work. You know, the architecture is fairly strong of the space. So I wanted to balance that through the curved Italiano chairs, you know, the movement in the Moatar rug. The, um, I love the metal side tables that are from Noir. Um, the, console on the back wall behind the sofa is from Sondra Living, which is um, a Mart 
piece. It's got this beautiful, um, I'll post a picture of it um, in my Insta story if anybody wants to take a look at it. It's got this really beautiful ribbed woodwork. It's got this, it's a new piece. It's got this great rhythm going down it, which I thought was really interesting against the beams. Um, and then the um, sofas from Queensworth. It's this beautiful um, feral mitten sofa that we use quite often. It's got a deep seat, nice pitch, really comfortable. You can curl up in it. So the idea was really about relaxation, finding space to just kind of get away. Great, great. Escapism. Now, looking mm -hmm. at the windows are really beautiful too. But in real life, they're, they are really fantastic. I'm, it's coming out soon. A little bit of the house has been published, but um, the rest of it will be out soon and I'm very excited to share it. And I'll be interested to see if anybody notices it's the same room, but with completely different furniture. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's move on, if we could, and take a look at Chris's space. Chris, you had the dining room, something that's always near and dear to my heart. Talk to us a little bit about your inspiration for the dining room. Yeah, for me, in a dining room, um, you know, it can serve as many um, ideas throughout the day. But for me, I was thinking, man, people are home now, and they may just ha be having family over, you know, they're quarantining with certain people, or they're not seeing them at all, but the people in their homes are wanting to come in and sit around a table after being, like, like Tish said, trying to do conferences in the living room or the basement, and sitting around a table and, and having conversation, um, or sitting around a table and putting a puzzle together, and so, uh, as a family. So for me, I really wanted to create this room that was multi, you know, faceted and could be quiet at times, but also could have energy at times. I think this, the wallpaper is sort of where I started out with the inspiration. And, and it, you can't really tell in the image on this board, but it, you know, the background is a very silver metallic background and it's so dreamy and so watery uh very zen but then there's the strong power of of the tiger or the dragon we can't ever decide which one it is but um <laughs> so you know it has <clears throat> it has um zen but it also has some power and some 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 boldness some stability uh so uh you know i started with the wallpaper and then moved to the quiet moatar rug that is just kind of watery um and then the lighting uh i went with something very minimal that can be turned up with a dimmer for you know if this turned into a homework room or it also could be uh, tuned down with the sconces and have a, a very elegant evening. Um, so I love to entertain and I so that's why I was excited to get my first pick was the dining room because I just I love it when a room can create conversation and people gathering. I, I just I love gathering with, with folks and family and friends so um, so I feel like this was this room the colors the gold soft golds um, and warm tones of uh, grays just kind of felt, you know, relaxing and retreat like. Talk a little bit about the sources from both America's Martin ADAC that you used um, to create the space and then we'll take Sure, it. yeah, so, so I started with the, uh, the paper from uh, ADAC, uh, Clarence House, so uh, I loved the paper and then I really started, and then I went to the rug, which was at, at ADAC too, it was a Moatar rug. And then, um, and then I went to Curry, um, Curry and Company for the lighting. Both the sconces and the chandelier both came from there. Um, I, I loved the, the lack of movement, just very easy, very just simple um, in the lighting fixtures. Uh, the table came from, um, uh, excuse me, it, it, it's a um, Hellman Chang table from Jim Thompson. And um, I just love his lines. I love that he incorporates stains and also, you know, gold leafing or metal. Same with the chairs there from there. Um, and then I found a beautiful piece of art from uh, the Wendover Art Group which to me created the feeling. It, you sort of got lost. It's a very zen piece of art 
and it's um, a custom large scale piece that they can do for you. Um, I, I just loved how it, you, you really, were you driving down a road, were you swimming down a lake, you kind of could create, could create your own um, image here. Um, the other thing, uh, the, um, the bar uh, is from, um, uh, excuse me, Arteriors. And again, a dining room can be where you're hanging out fixing cocktails. So everyone loves to be a part of that party where you're just sitting back, having a drink, catching up. I thought the console, and it's not pictured here, but it's, it's gorgeous. It's very zen. It has a little bit of gold detail through the dark ebony wood. Um, and so I loved having all the mixes of metals and woods and, and metallics all kind of pulling together. Let's take a look at the rendering. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about the aspect of health and wellness um, within the space. Yeah, sure. So the drapery, um, I chose a very soft velvet. Uh, I think everyone loves, um, you know, we're all textile people and everyone loves to be around soft materials. So I just felt like, you know, it, the wellness of just having soft fabrics around you or sitting on soft fabrics. I think you want to cozy up in these chairs, you know, they have arms. So of course, they're a lot more comfortable than most. So, uh, but the wellness, once you get into the space, the, the gold tones and the metallics, I, I, feel, I feel are just very calming. And, and when I thought about having dinner in this space, it brought joy to, to me. And I feel like we all um, feel very, uh, we feel good when we have joy around us and the joy of conversation and the joy of friendships and family. So uh, I think that that, and a cocktail, uh, I think that that uh, makes us all feel much better. It's, it's a beautiful space and I love the wallpaper. I just think it's stunning. Thank and I would, I would remind everyone listening that Sarah shared at the beginning, this will be available. So if you are looking for particular sources, you can come back and take a look at this and all the sources are listed on those first, first mood boards. Let's move on to Justin's room if we can. Justin, what was your starting point for this space? So my starting point for the space was the bed. And I absolutely love to design bedrooms and that's always my starting point. It should be the most comfortable piece in the room because that is the first place that you wake up in and the last place that you go to sleep in, in your home. So I wanna make sure that it's really, really comfortable. Um, as far as my aesthetic, you'll notice if you look at a lot of my work, there aren't a lot of pieces, but each piece makes a statement. And so that is something that I wanted to carry throughout this particular room. Great, and I have to say, I could live in a Justin Williams bedroom. I think they're all gorgeous, everyone you post. Yeah. But let's take a look at the rendering and maybe talk to us a little bit about the sourcing and where you pulled from. Yeah, absolutely. So I frequent um, America's Mart more so than I do ADAC. So I wanted to make sure that when I was curating the space that I used a lot more of ADAC's showrooms and I absolutely fell in love. I actually went down and you know visited several of the showrooms and pulled pieces from there. So the bed um, is from Paul, it's the Denali bed, um, beautiful bed and it's wrapped in a velvet finish, which, you know, I like soft um, materials in a bedroom because they are absorbent of sound. And so when you lay down, you want something very quiet, you know, that will absorb any sound that's around you. So I wanted to use a bed that um, had a really great material on it. The lamps uh, actually come from showroom uh, 58 beautiful lamps in person. If you are there, you know, check them out because these, as soon as I walked in, I said, that's it. Those are the ones we're going to use those. So um, the nightstands also are from Sherwin 58 and they have a honeycomb um, door panel on them, which I thought was really cool. It's always fun to include shapes and different things like that in designs. Uh, that make them really stand out. Again, when you're utilizing pieces, you don't have to use a lot of pieces, but just make sure that the pieces make a statement. 
And as far as the drapery, this is very my, much my style, ribbon edge drapery, velvet linen mix. I love that because it's super clean. And um, I mean, I may be a little biased because I'm six foot three, but I like for things to look tall. <laughs> so <laughs> everything's always vertical for me. But the showstopper in this room, in my, uh, from my perspective, is the chandelier, which is also from Showroom 58. And I wanted something that was reminiscent of a hotel lobby. Because when you walk into a bedroom, I personally feel like you should just want to go to sleep, cuddle up and go to sleep. And um, I felt like this, uh, the design of this space really makes you want to do that. It sure does. Thanks for sharing your design and thanks for all four of you for sharing these designs. I have a couple questions for the whole panel and then we'll open it up to Q&A from those that are viewing. The first one is, if you could recommend one design element to your clients as a start to a healthy home, what would it be? I'll take <laughs> I, would, I would definitely say texture um, because it, it means a lot, you know? If you're laying on the sofa, you have this really nice soft pillow next to you, it calms you essentially, you know, lowers your anxiety. So I focus a lot on texture um, when I'm working with uh, clients and um, that is something that I actually stress to them. What about you, Caitlin? Yeah, so I would honestly say bring plants into your space, bring in a living element. Um, you know, they help purify our air. They also um, give us something to do while we're stuck at home for so long. You can water your plants and just something to um, care for. And I just feel like, you know, bringing in a natural element is the number one way to bring wellness into a space. I have to say that's become my COVID um, hobby and I've got a jungle <laughs> right now because, <laughs> because of COVID. <laughs> Tish, what about you? I'm alone in that. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. We're all out. We're all gardening at this point, in and out, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I would say comfort. You know, there, it's fun to have some sculptural pieces, but know the ones you're not actually going to sit on that are just there for the art of it, right? And where do you really want to curl up? Where do you want to spend time? Where do you want to to have them in it. Um, I would say that mixed with lighting. I've had more people call me um, and one of the issues has to do with lighting and, um, and making it appropriate inside to outside and, um, and really controlled lighting. It's, it's good to have negative space, right? It's kind of like I always say in my design that everything can be the star. Some things move forward, some things are support characters. It's the same thing with, with lighting. Some things are important and they're meant to light an area, whereas the little bit more moody, shadowy area controls how you move through a space and how you use a space. Mm -hmm. Very That's good point. Great. Chris? Yeah, I agree with Tish. I think lighting is so, so important, even with draperies that can close or open, letting a little bit or a lot in. Do we want to be cozy? Do we want to be bright? Um, so lighting for me is like my biggest thing. Uh, whether what create what lighting can we create from the lamps or the or the daylight, but also rugs, your carpet. Um, I think having something textile and cozy in a space. Uh, take your shoes off, let your feet hit something super soft, create the mood, um, slow down, step on something that's, you know, so appealing to the senses. Yeah, that's a very good point. I also think with lighting, now we have to think about how do I look for Zoom, you know, so there's another lighting element now too. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Um, As I saw this morning from Denise McGay, hey, God bless the ring light. <laughs> so true. I clearly don't have today. <laughs> <laughs> so true. My last question for the group before we open it up to Q&A. Um, we have a lot. I noticed when people were saying hello, I noticed Saudi Arabia. We have international. We have all over the United States. As I said in the beginning, we take for granted the wonderful design resources we have here in Atlanta, both in America's Mart and ADAC. But if you were to recommend to a designer how to use both, if they were just coming to town for the first time, what advice would each of you give that designer? 
Oh, I'll, I'll start. Okay. Um, because I'm lucky enough that I'm actually a tenant at ADAC. I have been for um, 14, almost 14 years. Um, and then when I first started my career, I wasn't afraid to, actually at first I was terrified, but once I got past that part, I wasn't afraid to walk into a showroom and say, please show me what you have. What are you known for? Who are your major lines? What's new? And really get to know people and develop a rapport with them. Um, and it took all of the edge off. So even when I'm in other cities now, I walk right in and I'm like, this isn't my design center or this isn't my mark. Um, but please show me, you know, take, if you don't mind just taking a few minutes, showing me around, showing me what you guys have, help me get acquainted. So then you can use the spaces really well. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the shift that I've seen in the mark, especially over the last few years is, is as designers and much they've been welcoming to us you know please come in and use our spaces please um now there's the ballet if you need you know if you're in a hurry or you need to meet a client down there or whatever um so my big one is you know just ask for help and and get to know people so that you can pick up the phone i mean it's next door to me but there are times i still pick up the phone and go um i have a meeting in a few minutes can you pull this one thing i'll be right there <laughs> or if you know them well enough, they may run it over. You know, whatever the thing is, it's it's great. They're all part of our team, both downtown and in Buckhead. So let them be a part of our team. Great advice. Uh, Caitlin, what would you advise? Yeah, I'm going to agree with Tish. I think the yeah. key is to partner with your reps and partner with the, the showroom assistants because they come with such a wealth of knowledge. Um, it's really, you know, we have enough going on in our brains trying to design for our clients. Like, let them do what they're good at so that we can do what we're good at um so yeah i think that's the that's the number one key is to to partner with your partners <laughs> <laughs> chris uh well one thing and i agree with both of you um i love to get in the elevator at america's mart and press a button that i don't hardly ever go on a floor and just taking my time i would say for uh advice there is no hurry. I think if you take your time and you go through and you just walk, I mean, you may want to do a day of just uh, walking through before you're starting your selections, just so that you can really just calm down and not have anxiety while you're roaming the halls and floors of both of the centers. Um, I love, I love pushing a button and going to a floor I don't ever visit. And I usually find the best stuff. Um, vendors I have not used before uh, because you know we all get in our sort of same boat of using the same folks and we love them and they they give us great service but um, I would say just go off the beaten path a little bit and take your time great Justin I'd like to add to both what Chris and Tish uh, said about Chris more so exploring right because these places are huge <laughs> and there's no way that you can tackle it all. So just explore, write down the things that, you know, you connect with, the showrooms that you connect with. And to add to what Tish was saying, building those relationships with those different vendors, because it's easy for me now because I can pick up the phone and say, hey, Christina, can you pull these items for me? Because we have that rapport. So those two things are super important when it comes to exploring both ADAC and America's Mark. Great advice. And I want to say that um, everyone is more than willing to walk you through and tell you about their lines. Um, that's why they're there. And so we just really are very lucky to have both America's Martin and ADAC here in Atlanta. I think, Sarah, I'm going to ask you to share. I see a couple questions have come in, but I know you've had some other emails too. You want to walk us through some of the Q&A and everyone just feel free to jump in um, on your answers. Yeah, that sounds good. Alrighty, first question to come in is for everybody. How do rugs convey wellness? Moatar seems to be a favorite of this group. Do they symbolize serenity, harmony, or wellness? Oh, they, <laughs> they convey all of that. They also, you can go very bold. It can be very, um, they have very traditional pieces. They have very contemporary pieces. They have, you know, you name it and the, they've got it or they can make it 
which is one of the things where we've got a number of custom pieces being done right now. And um, it's really great for grounding a space and, mm. uh, and it's that level of texture that um, came up a few minutes ago. You know, it's just that real cozy texture that, and there, that, um, that helps as a space. Some people start with a rug, some people finish with a rug. Anyone else? I think also to Justin's point, when he was speaking about the upholstered bed, they also bring an element of sound attenuation to a space, which is very important, especially now when everyone is all at home together and trying to, you know, have multiple things happening in one single space. Um, so they also bring that to the table. Yeah, and, and one thing that we haven't really spoke about is the budget. You can find anything across the board. You don't have to go to the most expensive or the least expensive, but you can choose a rug at any level and still get the feeling and, you know, the, um, you know, the tactile part of it. Yeah. It's One of the things that I'm really loving with them right now that I seem to be doing a number of is the different hides. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They're so great with, it's so counterintuitive because they're so great with kids and pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can clean, it's, you know, it's, you can clean anything. They have this great feel to them. You can design any pattern, but um, they're, they've got some really, really great resources there at the moment. Awesome. I will share that um, I think we all do love Moatar, but there are a lot of rug vendors, both at America's Mart and ADAC, that are wonderful sources. And Chris, to your point, there is a broad spectrum of price points available also. So you can meet it for any project. That's true. Sarah? Thanks, designers. <laughs> All right, next question is for the group as well. Do you have any tips for creating a space without over-designing it? Kind of a loaded question. So, yeah. <laughs> Caitlin, if you want to take it. Um, sure. Uh, it's, that it's not hard to um, over-design a space, but I think part of the beauty of design is that it's always editable. So we can always bring in and we can always take away. Um, so uh, I think it was Iris Apfel um, or, Sh or maybe it was Coco Chanel that said, uh, whenever you get dressed, put everything on and then just remove one piece and you're mm -hmm. ready to go. Um, that's kind of how I look at design. <laughs> So I think, you know, bring everything that you love into the space, step back, take a look, edit, um, and then, you know, your room is ready to go. Anyone else? For yeah, me? I feel like if there's that one piece that you can edit and the room still stays how it's designed, I think that that's exactly what you do. You, you can edit, you can always take away. Right. Yeah, and to, to tag on that, it's always easier to take to add rather than to take away so i would start with the minimum start with the things that you need the the you know the staple pieces and from there you add you know your necklace or you know things like that so um it's always easier to add than it is to take away i think we inherently collect things over time um whether it's from our travels or just kind of collecting them throughout our lives so um it's just a natural you know, way of living in our spaces that stuff just keeps coming in and keeps coming in. So to Justin's point, starting with kind of a minimal slate is the best way to go. I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. And you put the one special piece, you know, whether it be on the coffee table or the bedside table, whatever the thing is, you put that really special accessory um, put a little bit of life and then see what needs to come from there. Mm -hmm. Clients that just want everything out, you know, how many things can we get on a bookcase? Then I'm like, okay, if you, right, Chris, I get it. Then, <laughs> then it's, you know what, you can keep these. We're not going to get rid of them, but let's pull the, whatever, the seven things, lucky seven that you really love. And then after X many months, rotate it. Then you don't have to remember piece. that lucky seven. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, rotate it because then it's special instead of just a sea of things then there's the story of the room, the story of your life. And it can evolve. I mean, it can change. Absolutely. Great advice. What's next, Sarah? All right. This question is for the group, but also for Justin. Um, this one came through email uh, and it says, besides the COVID-19 shift to health and wellness, the Black Lives Matter movement and is also very prevalent in our society today. What do you think is going to change in design due to the movement? 
You know, that's actually a really good question. I think that you will start to see a lot more um, designers of color uh, being featured in different things, which I've already seen a shift, which um, I can definitely appreciate. So I think that is a great question. And um, you'll definitely uh, be more aware of a lot of designers of color being uh, featured and showcased. Anyone else? Even, even artists, you know, finding the artist of color, uh, going to galleries, you'll see, I've already seen more um, being featured. It's wonderful. Very true. Sarah? All right, that's all the questions today. If we have any more, anyone wants to answer them in the chat function. Um, I'll wait just a minute. I don't see any more in the Q&A. But such a good talk. I do want to, you know, give a shout out to um, to ADAC as well as I did in the in the beginning. Um, our Fall Design Week and Discover ADAC will be happening in just in next week. So, um, you know, Fall Design Week starts September twenty first, the twenty third, with Discover ADAC happening the twenty second through the twenty fourth. Um, so be sure if you haven't registered yet for either of those markets, do so on either of our websites, americasmart.com or um, adacatlanta.com. And wanted to mention for those in the trade who are not yet registered to shop at America's Mart um, or ADAC daily, and for those who haven't been to the campus in a while, we know that both of them are huge. And we know America's Mart is huge, as mentioned. Um, so we do have design services that are available to help you walk through the campus and educate you of all of our resources. So Tasha Norland, who is on this call, she'll put her info in the chat function. And feel free to reach out for an appointment. Um, you know, we can help get you started, maybe, you know, set you up with a designer or help you kind of navigate if you're just starting your design business um, at America's Mart. You know, and as the panelists mentioned, we do have valet parking open year round and free daily parking available to designers. And of course, the webinar will be available on demand. Um, you'll get emailed right after this airs um, to, to view it later if you if you want. So thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Steve, so much. Justin, Tish, Caitlin, and Chris. This is such a great conversation. I know it's been such a crazy year, so it's fun also seeing everybody um, and hearing how you're designing now with the shift in, in society and, and everything happening these days. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. And thank you, Steve. Great moderation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see all of you. I wish we were in person. I know. I wish. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.